Brothers and sisters, uh, I'd like to invite you to uh, turn to your Bible with me. We're going to the book of uh, Ezekiel chapter 8. Ezekiel chapter 8, uh, we are turning there, just a brief report, a short report here, uh, to alert you to be aware of, once again, what is happening within uh, this denomination. Jesus is uh, coming again, and we can see the apostasy is getting worse and worse and worse. In the same way that the regular line in uh, Jesus' days uh, were not ready or did not prepare the people, or I should say, were deceiving the people by crying out peace and safety, and the people, by the time the Messiah came, they were not ready. They did not recognize Him. They were in their sin. And uh, bro brothers and sisters, the Bible says that uh, if we are deceived, if we died in our sin, there is no hope for us uh, of uh, ever seeing our loving Jesus and live with Him throughout eternity. So, therefore, God's people needs to be alert, alert needs to be aware of what's happening. And uh, the same way God's people living in the time of uh, Jesus uh, were not ready, not because uh, some of them didn't love God, not because some of them didn't hate sin, but because uh, they re had relied on the teachings of the Pharisees, the, Fa the Sadducees, the religious leaders, uh, but they were not being fed with present truth. And uh, they were already in apostasy, and they kept this apostasy from uh, the, the eyes of the people, from their sight. And uh, notice now, this is uh, again uh, one more time. I'm uh, alerting you, letting you know where we are. In this chapter there of Ezekiel chapter 8, God uh, allowed Ezekiel to see one abomination after another. And uh, one of those uh, abominations uh, we find that in the latter part of Ezekiel chapter 8. This was the greatest of all the, the abomination. Notice now, again, Ezekiel chapter 8, beginning in verse 15. And the Bible says, Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house. And behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men, with their, what, what is it? With their backs toward the temple of the Lord, and their faces toward the east. And they worship the what? They worship the sun toward the east. So notice now. This was the religious leaders now that Ezekiel saw. They were doing what again? They had their back towards uh, the temple. They were facing uh, east. Remember again uh, one more time. Uh, the temple was built in a way so that when the children of Israel will come into the temple, that their back will be facing east, uh, meaning uh, the, towards the rising of the sun, so that they would not... Uh, get a custom in f to face the sun and to worship the sun the way the pagans were doing. And so now, but we see a reversal here. They had their backs towards the temple and they were facing east, worshiping the sun. Oh, now, in our hymnal, in the Seventh-day Adventist hymnal, it tells us very plainly what's coming, that this denomination the regular line of Seventh-day Adventists will one day be keeping Sunday as the day of worship. And if you remember in uh, this uh, communion song that we sing uh, a lot uh, each time uh, we have communion service, uh, and the lyrics goes, Let us break bread uh, together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, O oh Lord, have mercy on me. When I, when I do what? When I fall on my knee with my face to the rising sun. Now, this was part of the infiltration of the Jesuits within the Seventh-day Adventists, which we have at the top there in the leadership now, that 
infiltrated that change these words, these lyrics, uh, and then and then induce there and uh, um, and put Catholic themes there to get us to the custom of uh, worshiping the sun. But notice now, remember whatever you implant in the mind, it stays there, brothers and sisters. This is the name of the, the game. This is what, is what is called subliminal message. Here is how the dictionary describes or defines subliminal messages. It says here, subliminal message of a stimulus or mental process below the threshold of sensation or consciousness perceived by or affecting someone's, notice with me now, by or affecting someone's mind without them being aware of it. That's the definition for a subliminal message. You don't even realize that these thoughts, these ideas are being implemented into your mind. And sooner or later, what it does really, it relaxes you. Things that you objected before, like for example, in this case here, Sunday worship, things that you were, uh, you were in objection before, but because they use uh, these type of tactics now to cause you to accept it, uh, like that song there, when I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, that sun worship there, but you don't really realize it. That means you are being conditioned to accept things that you would normally not accept. That's violating your conscience without you being aware of it. And this is the reason why in this video of uh, Devon Franklin, it seems like uh, he is promoting uh, Sabbath worship, uh, but towards the latter part uh, of the video, what, what do you see there? There is a switch there. It says if you can't uh, worship on Saturday because of uh, the, the inconveniences, uh, well, there is a substitute day of worship uh, that Sunday. Watch the video one more time before we go any further. For the 70% of people out there who aren't thinking of doing that, and I'm one of you, I'm moving over at his camp now. So right. I want more folks out there just to give this a shot, but I know it comes on attack me. So the first thing is you say, we actually got to pick a day. I, I pick my day yeah. in my mind. I know for me it has to be a Sunday, but for you it's different. It is different. Yeah. It is different. Let's look at the week here. Uh, so seven days a week, you know, biblically and spiritually speaking, the seventh day is Friday night sundown to Saturday night sundown. So that is the day that I take off, that I observe, and many cultures uh, around the world still do that. Yep. Now, you may be in service, right? You may be a doctor, you may be a nurse, you may be a fireman, a policeman, and you just can't do that. So it's important to still apply the principle of rest at some other point during the week. So it's important to still apply the principle of rest at some other point during the week. That was a perfect uh, definition there, as you saw in this video there, of subliminal message. Now, let's uh, look at one more time uh, this abomination there that was being done there in the sanctuary. One more time. And uh, Ezekiel saw in verse 17, he says, Then he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence and have returned to provoke me to anger. And lo, they put the branch to their nose. They, they, they did what? They put their bran the branch to their nose. So they were moving away from the Word of God, and they were turning to sin. They were abandoning the law of God and turning to sin. Verse 18, Therefore, God says, will I also deal in fury. Mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. And though they cry in my ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. So notice now, God says, because of these abominations that they are doing in the sanctuary, 
They will turn, they will try to cry unto me when the calamities come, when all of these bad things starts happening to them because they have forsaken the law of God. God says, I will not hear. Now, this was referring to the, the regular line in uh, Ezekiel's day. God says he will not hear them. So, as you keep on reading, going into chapter 9, you see what happened to them. Now, let's bring it closer to home. Is, are the same abominations happening in the regular line of Seventh-day Adventists? Is this a particular abomination there that we find in the last few verses of chapter 8? Are we worshiping the sun in a subliminal way? Are we deceiving is, I should say, is the Seventh-day Adventist regular line deceiving Seventh-day Adventists to worship, to start worshiping on Sunday using subliminal messages, using deception without them being aware of it? Notice what this says here. This is from AOL.com Alabama. Civil rights leader Al Shopton, critic of Jeff Sessions, to do what? To visit Huntsville, Alabama. That's January 20th, 2016. Notice now, keep in mind here, this is the world speaking here. It says, Shopton will be appearing at the Oakwood University Church as a special guest of what the Seventh-day Adventist Church described as a special worship experience to kick off the church's annual Black History Month celebration. Shopton will be attending, notice with me now, the service at 11 a.m. on January 28th. January 28th, that would be a Sabbath. That would be this coming Sabbath. That's January 28th. So, all Shopton, this uh, leftist, this uh, man who been uh, pro promoting the, the, the teaching of Rome and the licentiousness and abortion and all of these things are coming to where? To Oakwood University Church, a Seventh-day Adventist church, and he's coming there to speak. To speak about what, brothers and sisters? But notice now, this says here he's coming on a Saturday, but notice what uh, the Oakwood University page, Facebook page says now. Keep in mind, he was supposed to come to speak there on the 28th, which is a Saturday. Also keep in mind, uh, subliminal message, deception. But notice what happened here. Notice what it says here. It says, special community assembly, guest speaker, Al Shopton. What's the date now again? January 29th, 2017, Sunday at 6 p.m. Oakwood University Church, then it gives uh, the date there or the address there. But notice with me now. This was changed from Saturday to Sunday. Notice now, even though this would be late in the afternoon for them or depends on uh, the, when the sun sets, but notice with me now, the transition from uh, Saturday to Sunday, and they're going to give the reason. I'm going to read that in a moment. This is a way of using a subliminal, subliminal message. This is a way of uh, playing with your mind, uh, getting you to get used to coming uh, to church uh, on Sunday. But notice now, notice what it says next. It says, Please note that the date for activists, Al Shopton's visit to Huntsville, Alabama, at uh, Oakwood University Church has been what? Modified. It has been what? Modified to what? To Sunday. What was the reason? Notice now. January 29th at 6 p.m. Given the community nature of this event, uh, coupled with it uh, serving as a precursor to Black History Month activities, uh, this adjustment will enable activist Shopton to interact with those in attendance from the Huntsville community and surrounding areas more extensively. Notice now, then it says, given the overwhelming response 
we have received regarding our chaplains coming to the Oakwood University Church, the date and time of his visit has been moved to where? To Sunday. Keep in mind there. Though they may be having it late in the afternoon, uh, one more time, again, uh, again uh, depends on when the sun set over there. But the fact that you have the word Sunday there, well, we're inviting the community to come to a Seventh-day Adventist church to hear this worldly individual speak on Sunday. We're transitioning from Saturday to Sunday, brothers and sisters. That's a subliminal message there. That's conditioning your mind to accept it. But again, they give the reason, well, we have this superstar coming and there has been such a a response from the community. Well, let's invite the community now to come on Sunday because there, there will be so many people from the community coming. It's a transition from Saturday to Sunday. Thou shalt see greater abomination than this. It says, making this adjustment will afford activist Chopton the opportunity to speak and spend more time at the Oakwood University Church, brothers and sisters. And so we are seeing the greatest of all the abomination happening right now. We've already seen all type of abomination coming in. Transgender elder and all of these things, we've already seen them. The greatest of the abomination is when they facing the sun to the east and have their backs towards the temple the temple and this has already been happening this has been happening within a seventh day adventist they've already setting their, their their faces towards the sun and worshiping the sun and having their backs towards the temple because the temple represent the pillars of our foundation They've already turned their backs on this. Now the question that, that I want to ask, as we see all these abomination, for those uh, Seventh-day Adventists who still believe that we must support the conference, the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. Now, question for you, will you also keep Sunday? Will you also go there to see this abomination, our chapter? on an Adventist pulpit speaking, brothers and sisters, will you keep Sunday as well? If the answer is no, why not? Because we, some of you believe that we must, regardless of what happened, we must uh, support uh, the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. Well, on the other hand, brothers and sisters, you have a choice uh, in the matter. The boat has two sides. There's a side that uh, believe in uh, victory over sin. A side that believe uh, in uh, keeping uh, the commandments of God. A side of that boat that believe that by God's grace we can do all things. A side, one side of that boat that believe that uh, the Sabbath separates us from uh, the world. The Sabbath separate us from sin. The Sabbath is a sign of God's creation. The Sabbath is a sign of God's redemptive power to redeem us, to save us from, from sin. And that side of the boat is the right side of the boat. It is the right side. It is the side of faith. You do have a choice in the matter. You do not have to keep plugging your nose and uh, sitting there, if you truly love Jesus, you will come on that side of the boat. Because what is going to happen next to this denomination, the same thing uh, that happened uh, to ancient Israel is uh, right there. In uh, chapter 9 of uh, the book of Ezekiel, it describes that God uh, sent an angel to put a mark on who? Those who were crying and sighing for the abomination that was being done in the sanctuary. They were the ones who received that mark. And they were only a faithful few that received that mark, which was the seal of God. But then what happened to the leadership and to those 
who, were, who remain within the apostasy. Let's read it. It says here in verse 4, in chapter 9, beginning in verse 4, it says here, And the Lord said unto me, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Notice now. So that's one group there. And it's the smallest of uh, that group, the church there, or group from the church there. That's the right side of the boat there. Then it says in verse 5, And go and and to the others he said in my hearing, Go ye after him through the city, and smite, let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Notice with me now, slay utterly old and young, both maids and children, little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary, then they begin at the ancient men which were before the house. Notice now, it says that uh, that angel there that was deployed, that angels or these angels slayed both maids, little children and women. This is referring to who now? And the old as well. This is referring to those, uh, not the leadership now, those who were deceived by this abomination. Those who remain and kept supporting this abomination. And so, brothers and sisters, the counsel is clear. We can no longer sitting there and supporting this abomination. We will receive the wrath of God. That's exactly what is going to happen to the regular line of a Seventh-day Adventist. You do have a choice. If you love Jesus, if you love the truth, then you will come on the right side of the boat, which is the side of faith, which is the side where Jesus is. May God give us the courage to stand fast, to stand firm for Him, and not lose hope. If you have to make this stand alone in your family, in your community, brothers and sisters, Jesus will reward you 10 times. If you, ha you have to have a home church, brothers and sisters, now is the time for that. Don't be afraid. Stay home. Do not support this apostasy. If you cannot find a God-fearing, self-supported church, near you, stay home, do home churches, and God will see the desire of your heart, and God will see that you are not willing to be defiled, and He will make sure that He carry you through this tough time. He will make sure that you make it to the kingdom, He will make sure that He purify you and He will prepare you to stand for Him in these last days. Brothers and sisters, there's a time coming and it's right upon us when we're going to have to stand alone, as Sister White says, it's going to seem like, it's going to feel like, and it's going to be the reality that every earthly support will be cut off. Let's stand up for Jesus now so that we can stand up for Him when the crisis comes. Let's pray. Father God in heaven, hallowed be your name, O Lord. Help us, Lord, to be in good courage. You have called us in these last days to stand up for you. And as we stand up for the truth, many will be able to see the light. Many will be able to understand better. Many will be able to, to see the deception to see the subliminal messages, how they were being deceived. And Father, we pray for each one listening and watching this, that uh, they will see the truth as it is found in Jesus Christ and make a stand up for you. Forgive us, O Lord, of our many sins. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness and give us the strength not to repeat the same mistakes again. In Jesus' precious name, amen.